last week, the right behind me, more than 430,000 folks across the country found jobs in May. Well, that helped the unemployment rate dip to 9.7%, which was before 9.9%. While that's good news on the surface, the majority of those jobs, unfortunately, were temporary census positions. Of the 431,000 new jobs that were created in May, only 41,000 were created by private businesses, which indicates a longer-term recovery, if you will. Now, that's the fewest number since January, and that's why the markets were dipping yesterday. Now, in spite of a not-too-bright jobs report, many of you may be ready for a job change. It is okay to talk about that right now. How about three simple steps to make your career dreams a reality? CNNMoney.com broke that out for us. And as our next guest tells us, look for what will make you happy. Now, Paula Calagiri teaches human resource management and wrote the book, Get a Life, Not a Job. Uh, Paula, let me start with tip number one coming from CNNMoney.com. It says, use your time to determine whether and where you'd be happy most. What do you have to say about that? Right. I think it's most critical now that people get a really healthy self-awareness about how they like to work. You'd be amazed at how many people can't describe how they like to work, whether they like to work in a creative environment or in a team or work alone. Um, the second piece of that is understand what are your marketable skills, what are your talents, what are your abilities, what are you great at, and how do you compare to others who are in that, who are in that same area. And then the other piece is really around exploration. So many folks just stop too early and don't really think about what their possible careers, career prospects could be. You know, I think you make a really good point about saying to use your time to see how you'd be happy long term. Always undertaking right. that process of discussing what will make you happy in your life career-wise, not just when you hit some of those uh, specific intersections. And so point number two is, all right, I've got the idea in my mind. The second tip is, well, try it out. Find a way to do the job before you actually dive over the end of that pool. Right. And that's an important, another very important step. We want to be sure that before we invest, especially if we're going to invest in an opportunity for education or paying tuition dollars, we absolutely want to know that this is where we're interested in seeing our career, career go. So a best idea is really to talk to a lot of people who are in that career job, in that dream job, especially people who don't know you because they'll be Good able point. to give you some advice about the career, but not interpret it relative to, to your life. Um, this, the second real big piece of that is try to volunteer in the industry that you're interested in, maybe an unpaid mm. internship. There's lots of mm -hmm. possibilities to actually try out the job before you're in it. Yeah, uh, do practical work. How are you gonna know whether it actually works for you or not? And, and what you're saying is, you know, don't worry about necessarily getting paid. There's a lot of opportunities to practice your new path, if you will, to test it out in other venues, right? Right, absolutely. Okay, hey, so tip, Th there's go ahead. No, you're fine. All right, okay, so tip number three is hone your marketable skills right now. This is really kind of talking about how some skills work in a lot of different places. Absolutely, and, and I would add on to skills and almost just as important as skills, your network. Just like you're spending a lot of time building those great marketable skills, Build your network, and, and network in this case isn't just adding more friends to Facebook. Network in this case is really thinking about, um, say, a LinkedIn discussion group that's, that's dedicated to the area that you're interested in, jumping in on the discussion, really getting involved in the career that you want to eventually see yourself in. Paula, give me some ideas of what some of those marketable skills are that we might invest time in that we could use in many different places. What are some of those things that you have seen in your work as well as in the book that you wrote? Sure. An investment in our ability to use technology. So, so if you think about any profession that you might be interested in, if you have an additional set of skills around technology, that's always beneficial. If you have an additional set of skills um, in communications, both in your ability to write and ability to communicate verbally, that's also a, a tremendous help. Um, I'd also recommend that, that whatever, if you're working for an organization that you really like, try to invest in getting a better understanding of that industry that you're in, so, so some deep industry-specific knowledge is helpful. 
Uh, my producer and I were talking about this segment yesterday and we were saying, you know, is there a trend out there right now of folks that are moving away from full-time commitments, typical, historic, uh, stereotypical sort of job descriptions, nine to five, what have you, and moving into more flexible part-time positions for some reason. Is, is, that, is that something you're seeing at all? Oh, gosh, Richard, absolutely. And, and we're seeing it in the, in the unemployment statistics. Um, companies are, are desperately needing to compete. One of the largest items on their operating budgets are their wage bills, their human talent costs. Mm. So what we're seeing is companies becoming surgical in the types of positions that they're, they're keeping, the types of positions that they're, they're investing in, and they're using the contingent workforce in a much mm. broader way so that they bring in skills as necessary. So what that means for us practically is that we really do need to think about ourselves as, as free agents. We need to think about ourselves as, as independent contractors, as people who can do multiple or have multiple income streams at any given time. I, I strongly believe that's, what, that's the future of our employment reality. Yeah, because even as jobs may pay $75,000, the company, the cost to them could be 150000 or more because of all the benefits, et cetera. So much said. Okay, right. Paula Calagieri, right. you're not going anywhere. You're going to stay with us right there in our bureau because we've got some viewer questions coming up for you in just a little bit. Uh, and so stick around for that. I'll ask Josh Levs, right here to my left. Okay, I was jumping into your yeah. shot too early. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, I no, got you're, you always, you're always on it, my friend. <laughs> You've got some questions from yeah. viewers that have been going to Frederica's blog. What, right. what are you saying? Yeah, we, we're interacting with everyone everywhere. We got the blog, we got Facebook, we got Twitter. We got piece through for your questions. And Paula, I'm just going to get right to this, okay? Paul, Sounds you back great. with us? All right, cool. Let's go to this first I am, one. Yes. Uh, this is from a student. I want to bring you this one. This is um, a, she's a student. She says uh, uh, she's only ever had one job in retail for around three years. She says, I'm trying to find a more sturdy job. I'm willing to start at the bottom and work hard, but no one will look at me without the experience. That's from Jenny Marshall. And I'll tell you, I, I'm asking you that one because so many people have similar questions. So many people keep saying, hey, how am I supposed to get experience? if I can't uh, get the job. How am I supposed to get the experience to get the job in the first place? So well, what do you say to that? Right. I say, Jenny, you're, you're absolutely not alone, Josh, as you just said. There are, keep in mind, there are two things that you need to have in order to have a great career. One is a marketable set of skills, and the second is a, is a really highly motivated network in the area that you're interested in. So, so Jenny, what I would say to you is, while you're working that retail job, Think about gathering more marketable skills in an area that you're interested in moving into. And at the same time, build your network. Start going to professional conferences. Start, start attending networking meetings. Conferences. Join some LinkedIn discussion groups. Right. Exactly. Those are key. Um, to try and, and get yourself closer. Internships, volunteering, right? Well, these are the kinds of things we hear. Let's go to this next one because I think this Critical. is interesting. It's about overworking. A lot of people talk about how these days, if yeah. you have a job, you're forced to do too much. Uh, this is from Bush. Most big corporations are forcing fewer employees to do more. How do we find an employer who isn't doing this? Do you agree that a jobs bill needs to be introduced to protect current employees. I love that question. I've, I've been following the surveys, the studies that show a lot of people out there doing two or three jobs at work. What do you say? Right. And, and actually, and, and it's not surprising that, that um, job dissatisfaction is at an all-time high for that exact reason. Um, frankly, I don't know that we can, we can legislate it. That's just my opinion. I think what we'll need to do, um, companies will need to realize that at some point they're going to lose their most critical, most valuable employees. When, when that starts to happen, they'll, they'll take notice and, and ease up a bit. Um, but mm. for right now, uh, that, is, that, is, that is the reality. So you're going to have yeah. a job that that's all you got. But, yeah, yeah. But Josh, Paula, isn't this all about cross-training, about having <laughs> more experiences when you're in your jobs that you are more marketable over time? Is that also the other side of the argument? It, it is, Richard. And, and I'm a strong advocate of having multiple sources of income. And I know that sounds pretty odd right now at a time when, when people are trying to find one job or one job they really like. But I strongly believe that, that the more secure, the job security of the future will really be on the income sources that you create for yourself as opposed to the opportunities you have with any given company. Paula, thank you so much. Let's keep those questions coming. Let's show everyone where they can post them. I think you guys have this. It's the last thing in there. It's, um, you, we got Facebook, you got Twitter, you got the blog, see.com slash Josh. Uh, Richard, you know, every week we get a lot of questions. And usually at this time, we have a terrific financial guest like Paula today.
to help answer some of them. We'll get to more of them next week. What do you think? She did a good job, huh? I'm hey, She's coming back. I'm a lover of Paula. <laughs> yeah. We all got to think about how to keep ourselves marketable. You got it. Josh Lev, thank you. Thank you. Uh, what is VP doing a mile underwater? A practical demonstration of what that is when we come back.